how can INEC parties and voters ensure that Beavers isn't bypassed? Did politicians force the CBN's hand? It was a big weekend, Lagos. Let's talk. Trucks, uh, eight people were uh, killed yesterday in Ujolegba because a truck carrying a 20-foot container fell off a bridge and crushed a commercial bus. It killed two children and seven adults. That was yesterday. Today, another truck fell. This one was carrying a 40-foot container at Sawmill going towards Tokwemunda Bridge. On the live stream, I'm playing video for you of the moment that the truck fell over. Thankfully, there were no casualties with this one, but the truck is blocking most of the road. Last is working to remove it. You can see it on our live stream. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. Now, in both cases, the container was latched to the truck. I'm pointing this out because in the past, we have had lots of problems with unlatched containers falling off. But clearly, that's not the only problem. We also have a problem with roadworthiness of these trucks and bad driving. Because a normal truck driving uh, or driven normally shouldn't tip over on a clear road like you see happening in that video. Now, we can't speculate much about whether it was flat tires or broken axle or shaft or an imbalance, but clearly something was wrong there. You can see for yourself, you're watching it on the live stream. Nigeria Info 99.3 on Facebook, uh, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. We also have to ask ourselves if the authorities pay enough attention to the roadworthiness of these trucks. I mean, we have VIO on the roads. We have all these hoops that they make private cars jump through. These trucks, are they being put through the same thing? If they are... How are so many of them able to get on the road in such poor conditions? And then, of course, I mentioned the bad driving. We heard from an eyewitness that um, uh, the, the accident yesterday that killed uh, the children and the, and, and the men and women uh, was because the truck driver was reckless, drove one way, allegedly, and was driving at full speed, allegedly, and so toppled over. What do the authorities need to be doing differently if we want safer container trucks on our roads? 0700993993993. That's for men. Women call us on 01465-7190. How much are you buying fuel now? Remember to tell me that as well. Where are you buying from? How much are you buying for? Uh, are you buying still at 190, 175, 165? Are you buying at 300, 350, 400, 420? In some places I hear, in some parts of Nigeria, they're buying at 450 even. 99.3. Hello. <laughs> Hello, President Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for calling. What's your name? My name is Solomon. Welcome, Solomon. Yeah. Honestly speaking, with the way the country is going now, it says it's only God that will help us. Okay. Because we are really suffering. As for me, I'm buying for a 370 naira, wow. 350 naira, 315 naira, depending on how much I meet it. How much I meet it in the Philly station. Oh, my God. Man, Hello. Uh, where are you buying from? What? What? Where, where are the filling stations located? Uh, in Jackonde, there is one called Jesco. They said three seventy, three hundred and seventy naira. Mm. And the most annoying part is that even with the price, you still have to queue. Mm. That's the annoying part. Mm. Okay, for instance, now, like me, I'm an Uber driver. Okay. If I buy this for three seventy. Mm -hmm. And I carry passenger. How much do you expect me to collect to from them? From the because sometimes, right? in some of the trip, mm. even what Uber and boat is bringing up, mm. it will be difficult for us to maintain our car and even take home little things. Because by the time you buy for 370, mm. you have to now start telling your rider that you can't carry them on the price on the aisle. Because right. if you continue doing that, you will be out of the business. Right. That is just the honest truth. Right. My now is that, thank God it's happening this way. So it is left for we Nigerians to be wise whenever we want to vote this coming election. Nobody needs to be told on who to vote for. 
But if you are passing through this suffering, you should jolly well know who you want to vote for. But the thing is that there are people who also love suffering. Even though if you sell this for 800 naira, there are people who will still be buying it. Okay, currently now, there's a protest going on on Bini, in Bini Sapele, Aochi Road. Mm. Gradually, if the government do nothing about it, it will, it will spread all over the country. Because the suffering is too much. You see, some, some people who even have private car now cannot take you to the office anymore. What they do, they just pack it and use transport. And even the transport is not pocket-friendly at all. Because where you used to enter the commercial bus for 500 now before, it's 1,500 now now. The country is tough. We are finding it very difficult to cope. And the annoying part is that government is doing nothing about it. They are not even making any statement. They just take us for a ride. They believe they can do whatever they want to do. Mm. There is corruption in every system of the government, which is bad. Okay, look at the new Naira note. You printed this money, but you are not releasing it. That is getting into the hand of few people who has money to bribe their way or buy it from the bank. And it's very bad. Solomon, thank you so much for calling. I let Solomon talk for a while because he seemed like he had a lot to say. 99.3, hello. Hello. How are you doing? What's your name? Yeah. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? Um, yes. Um, on the issue, my name is Didi. On the issue of um, the container, mm. you know, this is something that happens all the time. What is the government doing? You know, like, I'm so scared of driving. When I see containers, I just take it. I can't even park my car by the roadside and wait for them to go wherever. And I keep a very far distance from them. Mm. This thing keeps happening. And I expect that the government would, you know, all this, this Whoever is supposed to take care of that, take we can't keep waiting for things to happen. Then we react. Something happens, then we react. These are people's lives. And I can assure you that the transfer or the container driver did not die, but he killed nine people. Mm. You know, and that is so unfair. So the, we just have to do something about this. We can't just keep wasting lives. There are people dying from um, um, head smears, Boko Haram. Then there's violence here and there. Then the few people that leave their house to go to an honest to look at honest living, then the container just lands on them and kills them, and the container kind of goes away country. That's very unfair. Mm. We should do something about those containers. They are really a minute. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, Didi. 99.3, hello. <phone rings> Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? <phone rings> oh, that's unfortunate. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, my God. Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? My name is my name is um I'm, my name is Richie. I'm an Uber driver, oh. but I'm supporter of what Mr. Solomon said. Okay. The guy that I called earlier on. Okay. I don't know eh. Throughout last week that I I, I worked, mm. I didn't even know how much I see. All I knew was that I was able to work. If I work, I go home, I eat. Mm. Most of my money was spent on buying petroleum. Imagine queuing, 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 uh, being staying on the queue for like. Four hours, mm -hmm. five hours, mm -hmm. just to buy fuel mm -hmm. at the rate of 290 naira, 300 naira. Mm -hmm. How much are we going to get from the job? Mm -hmm. How many hours do we have to work? Most mm -hmm. of us who don't even have private cars. Mm -hmm. How do we remit to the owners of the car? Imagine, I pay 30,000 naira mm -hmm. every week for this vehicle I'm driving. Mm -hmm. How do I get 30,000 naira, including my maintenance, including my car wash, including my tires, including, you know, my my internet, my calls, and everything. Mm -hmm. How do we, how what is what is going on? What is going on? What are we going to do? Where are we going to run to? Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at the look at the other aspect of this container and everything. Well, I will really blame mm -hmm. the container drivers and the association that is you know under them and everything. I will blame the Lagos State government because they are aware of all these things. They are aware of all these things, but because of the money they are getting from these guys, they won't do anything. Come to a better at night. Come to a better. Uh, this Akumonji axis come there around 10, around 11. So you see young boys coming out on the road with checkpoints. You will see two to three checkpoints before you drive from Egbeda to Yukondo, to and fro. You will see up to like eight, ten different checkpoints. These boys are on the road waiting for these trailer drivers so that they can collect money from them at night when they are supposed to move. Now, if they are trying to avoid those ones and say, okay, let us move in the, in the daytime hmm. when those. Uh, to not be on the road at night. They still have to face last man. They still have to face road safety. They still have to face the BIO. They still have to face the police. So what are they going to do? Like what are they doing? Okay, like they just whatever they feel like doing, and it is wrong because they are the ones who are going to be affected at the end of the day. They are buying petrol at a high price. We are we are we are we are losing our citizens, and the government is not saying anything about it. The state government is not saying anything about it. The federal government is not saying anything about it. For so how long are we going to continue like this? 
It is well, Sandra. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uche, for calling. 99.3, hello. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? I'm Naya. Naya, yes. welcome. Calling for me, where are you? Good to have you on the show. This truck, hmm. you hear one now. It is one month, one trouble from them. The government close eyes to these things. Is it that they are not aware? Is it or is it because they are not being affected first? Let me ask. Mm. All the police and numerous uh, uh, agencies on the road extorting money from these people. Don't they observe that some of these uh, trucks, the containers on top of them, are not well noted? Their screws are off. Nothing is binding them to the vehicle itself. When you go to Senehia, you cannot find a trailer, uh, I mean a container, mm. that is not tied to the, con- to the truck. What is the work of these people on the road? Extracting money from them. Where from work or the depot, where they're coming from, they are not checked. They are not examined. All they know is that money they want to collect. Why? And I thought they said, all these things should move at night only. Mm. They make law on papers, radio, and that is all. Bye bye, Sandra. It's so painful. So no, painful. It is, Noya. Yeah, thank you so much for calling. I should mention, however, that the two trucks that fell, uh, both yesterday and today, were actually tied to the trucks. Um, but, um, you know, they, they still fell yesterday as a result of um, the alleged uh, reckless driving of the driver. Today, we simply watched the truck topple over. You can see it on our live stream for yourself. (sighs) Now, this weekend, everyone was talking about the Oshun Election Tribunal. On Friday, the tribunal ruled that Boyega Oyetola won last year's Guber election, not Ademola Adelike, who was sworn in. If the appeal court and Supreme Court uphold that judgment, Adelike will step aside and Oyetola will take over as governor. We've seen lots of reactions to the judgment and to how the tribunal interpreted the data from Bivas. Oyotola and the APC presented a Bivas report from INEC. The number of accredited uh, voters in that report is lower than the number of votes in INEC's official results. Based on that, the APC argued that the INEC result is inflated with so-called overvoting. The tribunal agreed. Now, the PDP and INEC argued against this. INEC claimed that the Bivas report APC presented was a preliminary report. They claim that this preliminary report is not the official Bivas report. They call that one the synchronized Bivas report. That Bivas report came out a few days later. And by that report, there was no overvoting because the number of accredited voters was higher. But that brings up a very obvious question, right? Why didn't the first Bivash report and the synchronized Bivash report show the same number of accredited voters? That was the first obvious thing that jumped at me when I saw, you know, the, 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 the details of this, uh, of this story. APC said, uh, oh, it's because of fraud. They say INEC went back to inflate the Bivash figure to help Adeliki. And the tribunal agreed. But INEC says that the answer is simpler and less sinister. They say that each Bivas machine at each polling unit sends its updated list of accredited voters to the INEC server. However, because of connectivity and other issues, those updates don't all come in at the same time. That's why INEP keeps uh, uh, updating the synchronized Bivas report until all the Bivas machines have updated um, the server. According to INEC, when they gave the initial Bivas report to the APC, it came with a caveat that this was not the complete report to and also, according to um, INEC, the Electoral Act gives them 10 days to produce the final synchronized Bivash report. So they say, INEC says, that they acted within the law when they brought that final report. INEC also told the tribunal that they had the final right to determine which Bivash report was the authoritative one. 
the tribunal disagreed. I'm very curious about what's going to happen next. Tomorrow I'm going to have a few lawyers on uh, the big hard fact to look at the details of this case, to look at the judgment, because this judgment may go a long way to decide how Bivas is used in the general elections. You have both the PDP and the APC claiming that the other side has found a way to bypass the actual report's uh, results. So I will see uh, whom the public believes is being honest here. But I also want to know what you think uh, can be done to make sure that the political parties don't bypass beavers to enable overvoting or don't use the courts to misinterpret beavers data to get the results that they want. 0700993993993 that's for men women call me on 0146571190 and remember to tell me how much you're buying fuel for right now where are you buying how much are you buying for are you standing in long queues to do it let's talk and yes you can talk about our first story as well we've got um, okay we've got about 1 minute so i have i have time to take a call that will last 1 minute 99.3 hello Hello. Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's Hello, your name? Sandra. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Hello. My name is Nanya. Hi, Nanya. How Nanya. are you, baby? I'm very Hello? I'm very well. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, Adele, how are you there? I, I think d- I say hi to you. I'm number two again. Mm-hmm. Stand ahead. Before I, before I proceed, I would like me to find the nature I don't shoot. Okay. And they know the word, they know the other people, they go, let's do the cock pie for their mind. Maybe they really know say they're my fan. Oh, my. Happiness is free. I cannot come back to myself in Nigeria. I'm not going to look at my dad, okay? Now, I'm not going to say that for their mind. I'm going to know Allah. Sandra. Yes. Now, you know, every time. I just said, I got the kids. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much for calling. Okay. We'll take a break. When we come back from this break, let's talk a bit more about the Oshun uh, Tribunal um, uh, verdict. Information coming up. We'll be back in a moment. My country people. Remember, say, any decision when we take, get better and bad results. Yes, so... than winning the majority vote. That's history I will tell you. According to the Constitution of Nigeria, your candidate must win 25% of votes in two-thirds of all states plus FDC to become a president and same for all local government areas in a state to become a governor. Obasanjo, Eradwa, Jonathan and Buhari met this requirement. Therefore, you cannot win with only northern or southern or eastern or western votes or even only Christian or Muslim or idol worshippers votes alone. So, you need enough support from across the country. Now that you know, help tell everyone around you so that it will not be an issue tomorrow. Think Nigeria first. Think Nigeria always. This message is from the Center for Democracy and Development, CGD, with support from the Forum Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDA. Wake up to the horror stories making rounds with conversations that involve you and I. I am just telling you. You have the presidential candidate who come out to commit blunders there and yes, no one where that is going to meet with foreign counterparts. We must talk about them on the morning crossfire with Sheriff Quadri. You said you don't need the media. That's what you said. You, you just asked the right question.
Jason and the Solution, bringing you the hot tips and topics from current affairs and more. And they broke everything down because of government, because of policy, because of country we did. So it's actually a split, split. It's actually a 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 split. Join Sharif Quadri on the morning crossfire. 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday. Let's make headway when you talk on the number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Bonus seconds to call all networks, and the list goes on. These are more amazing data offers just for you. Dial star 200 hash now to enjoy. Nine mobile. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Are you like me that loves rap from DIG, Tupac, Hova, and Nas? Or you're still me that's a big R&B freak? I like the way you work me. Let's party like it's the 90s every Sunday on Rewind with Ufoma Egbamuno on 99.3 Nigeria Info every Sunday from 9 p.m. At last, the elections are here. Let's turn out en masse on election day and vote Ashiwa Yubola Tinubu as president of Nigeria for a renewed hope and a better Nigeria. Vote APC, the party that shows a broom. You are listening to your number one station for talk. Your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria, Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Lagos, what do you think can be done to make sure political parties don't bypass beavers to enable overvoting or don't use the courts to misinterpret beavers data to get the results that they want? I just brought you details from the tribunal's verdict in the Oshun state election. Uh, their verdict has, of course, uh, ruled that Buego uh, Yatola won last year's Guber election, not Ademola Adeleke, who was sworn in. Now, of course, Adeleke can go to the appeal court and the Supreme Court. If they uphold that judgment, Adeleke will have to step aside. Oyetola will have to take over as governor. And I told you what um, the tribunal stated was the reason for their decision. Um... Uh, Oyotola presented uh, a Beavers report from INEC. The number of accredited voters in that report lower than the number of votes in INEC's official results. So based on that, APC argued that INEC's result is inflated with overvoting. Tribunal agreed. Uh, PDP and INEC said, nah, uh, uh, no be so, no be so. The report where we give you, no be the final report where we suppose give you. Uh, Electoral Act gives us 10 days to present before you uh, a, a more complete res uh, report because the report keeps getting updated uh, until the entire process is over. Tribunal say, now you, now you know it, they talk, now for the pocket, that one. And so um, here we are. 
And like I said, tomorrow I have two lawyers join me on the show to take a look at the details of this case, to take a look at the judgment, because we have a general elections coming up. This judgment may go a long way to decide how Bivas is used uh, in that election, because you have PDP and APC claiming that the other side found a way to bypass the actual results from Bivas. So <laughs> as, as, as a member of the public listening to this, who do you think is being more honest here? Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three, and still tell me how much you're buying fuel, where you're buying it, if you have to queue for it. I've got women calling me on zero one four six five seven one nine zero. You should call the call as well. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hi Sandra. How are you afternoon. doing? Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm okay. Yeah, my name is Tokwe. Hi Tokwe, welcome. Yeah, it does the ocean election. Mm -hmm. We hear that according to the electoral law, mm -hmm. that if for the overvoting issue, mm -hmm. if there is an overvoting, mm -hmm. and uh, after the election, and the total result is higher than the total accredited, they said the election, electoral law said that the presiding officer has the right to cancel that election for that polling unit mm -hmm. on the spot of that. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the polling of polling officers? The, the presiding officers that what are they observing? Hmm. Why was all those things not cancelled until after months of swearing in the government? Hmm. There is there, this is not a fair thing, and, and this is not really giving us giving us a confidence on the beavers hmm. on these upcoming elections. Hmm. Something has to be done, and we need to know the facts. Okay, yes, all right. Thank you very much for calling. Tomorrow we're gonna have lawyers who will. Hopefully, help it help us make it a bit clearer. We've got Lucky on the line. Hi, Lucky. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Welcome. Yes, about the Oshu election. Mm -hmm. uh, there's fire on the mountain. You know. Okay. Serious fire. Please, can I talk about the expression of the new Nara note? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I will say it's okay since it's not after the election, but government should learn to you know stand by its word. They should learn to stand by their word. All of a sudden now, the Senate are now speaking for us. During the pandemic, when people were hungry, where was the Senate when the palliatives were discovered? What of where scarcity, clean of the poor masses, poor power supply, unemployment, kidnapping, everything. Now, with the CBN Naira redesign, they become the spokesman of the poor. Nigeria, let's shine our eyes. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you very much for calling. We've got Rita calling from Lakaway. Hi, Rita. Yeah, and uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, welcome. Happy weekend, Sandra. Same. <laughs> okay, thank Sandra, you. Mm. And this morning I was almost crying. Mm. Because I, in fact, I forgot what to say when I was talking to Sherry. Mm. Because I understand, in fact, how are they going to tell me that after the election has been conducted, they did not cancel the election, and now they are coming to tell us that, in fact, they even swear in Adeleke, mm. they want to collect it back mm. and say, come on, Sandra, this is election. We have a very big election coming up mm. eh, in mm. February. Mm -hmm. And we're here talking about just one seat. Mm. They're having over voters, Sandra, mm. for God's sake. Mm. See, this one is not giving me assurance so to be sincere or I neck, whatever they are doing, wherever they are, whoever he is or anybody, mm -hmm. please try as much as possible. Make this thing right so that Nigerians will vote for their right. I know that this thing is going to work out for us. Mm -hmm. Not as if after everything, they'll still come back and say hey, the election was come up. People should come out and vote again. Before that, everybody will be tired and say, okay, let's manage. I'm not going to manage oh, this 2023. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to manage. I want the right man for the right job. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Richard, for calling. All right, let me quickly bring you our final story, and then we can keep talking about all of it. This weekend, the CBN blinked <laughs> and postponed the Naira swap deadline. It's now February 10th. But the big question is why. That's the big question. Why? Just one day before the extension, the CBN tweeted that there was no going back. One day before they extended it. In fact, it didn't even reach one day. 20 hours before they announced an extension, they said no going back. So what could have happened in less than 24 hours to make them go back? Many analysts are pointing to possible political pressure. Last week, we talked about Bola Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate, saying that the swap was intended to sabotage his campaign. None of his opponents said the same thing, but the PDP's Atiku Abubakar did appeal to the CBN to move the deadline. 
Then there's the Kano State Governor, Ganduje, and President Buhari. The president was scheduled to visit Kano this week. Suddenly, Ganduje asked him to postpone the, the visit. He wrote, quote, deeply concerned with the hardship caused by the limited time given for halting the use of old Naira notes by the Central Bank of Nigeria and for security reasons, Kano State Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduje reveals that the state resolved and wrote to presidency that the visit of the president to commission some projects to be postponed, end quote. Then after the CBN extended the deadline, Ganduje said that the visit was back on. Said, quote, seeing is believing. 